Thank you, thank you. Okay, it is uh, surprisingly difficult to uh, write a short uh, presentation. So what I did is uh, put uh, every ta uh, uh, the timestamp of how, much, how long I think uh, a slide should take. And please feel free to hackle me if I go over time, because it will be on the expense of your coffee break. Okay, so unit testing, testing in general is important, but why is it important? Well, people will, well, I could have uh, created a graph in Inkscape just to demonstrate this point, but instead I will going to show you a picture I found on the internet that convey the same notion. The notion is that you will not be able to refactor that your code will get crusty and brickle and uh, you will be miserable and you will be cold and you will be wet and you will hate your life. So, I want to learn me some unit testing. How do I do that? I pick a book and I look at the examples and let's see what, what it says in this example. Well, I can see that we have a function named two Roman numerals. It gets an integer, it returns a string, and all I really have to do is to put some functions with some values and to see what values they are returning, to put an assert in front of them, to put it in an, a test function, and that is it. Well, that was easy. I can do it. I can fix everything. Well, it turns out that the world is the world is a complicated place. And two Roman numerals is a simple function. It is a nicely behavior, behaving function. It get a value and it returns a value. And the value it returns is uh, deterministically uh, uh, calculated out of the, its input. And the real world isn't like that. In the real world, you uh, inspect the world. You uh, check the value in a database. You check uh, the file system. You change the world. You have side effect. You put things in database. You put things on the file system you wait for this robotic arm to move from side to side so the sensor will get to the right place and if it doesn't you have to kick it and it, the, the world is nasty, the world is slow, the world is expensive, the world is flaky. So what we do? How can we test things? So let me give you an example. This is the guessing game. Uh, if you wrote uh, any sort of uh, uh, of code, you must have been, you must have written something like this. Well, what this what what this thing does? Well, it prompts the user for a number. Uh, uh, no, it picks a random number. It prompts the user for a number. Uh, if the, this number is too small, you say the, to, to the player, this is too small. If the number is too big, you say to the, uh, to the player, this is too big. And if it's just right, the players win. Well, this is not easy to test. It doesn't get a value. It doesn't return a value. And our program is even more complicated than that. It is the enterprise version. Well, Let's look at our enterprise version, our, our enterprise grade guessing game. Well, this game, uh, we try to cater to the international market. So instead of outputting strings in English, we will output them in the user's language. And we want to talk the user's language. In order to do that, we have an internationalization uh, module named i18n. and Every, you, every text that the user see will pass through that. And this, in order to know 
what uh, is the, the language of the user will inquire the system uh, environment what is the system uh, definitions of the language. And even if we haven't had that, well, there are lots of things that we do that aren't easily testable. We print things. We call seed random. How, how can we test such things? Well, let's have a closer look. Perhaps we can. Well, oh, I see one. There's a function I think I can test. Let's look at it. Well, yes, uh, we have a function that takes a level. Yes, we are enterprise grade game. We have levels uh, and we calculate the maximum number that the user must consider based on that, uh, on that number. Well, this is simple. It gets a number. It returns a number. It does a simple calculation. I can test it. It's just like Roman, num Roman numerals. Well, and here is the test. And I have a passing test. I have a dot. Hooray! My, my code have test. I, I've done it. Well, not really, because this is only a trivial amount of code that is tested. Most of my code isn't tested. And how, what, how can I go from here? This is, this is not serious work. Well, let's, look, let's have a closer look. Let's try to look if we can see something, we can do something about our lang function. Well, what our lang function does, it's ins it inspect the, uh, uh, the system environment to see what is the language of the user. The way it does it is it in a very wise-ass way. Uh, it tries to uh, check uh, several variables in the system uh, one by one. The first one that isn't null, isn't none, it will return that value. Uh, and if it find nothing, it will return C, which is the convention for the default language. Uh, how, can we, how can I test it? Well, it, it uses, it, it, it inspects OS env. Well, I can go into the environment, I can poke inside, I can try to change values in there before the test, run the test and put the values back and hope that no one else would read the environment while I poked in it. It's supposed to be okay because I'm running in my own process and, well, there's a better way. We can use mocking. Well, what mocking is, is a way to let all this ugliness of the uh, of the real world go away. How are we doing going to do that? We use the um, dynamic nature of Python to take the name that the uh, our function looks at in order to inspect the world and replace the object the name points to with an object that we put instead that will behave nicely. So we can test our code. The so-called world will now behave nicely and our test will pass, I guess. So how are we going to do that? We are going to replace the environment with an, a patched object and here's how it goes. The first thing we have to do is to import the mocking language, uh, library. That library is uh, supplied as of uh, Python 3.3 and above uh, uh, as a standard library, as a sub-package sub of the uh, unit test. If we are using low, uh, lower versions of Python from uh, 2.6 and up, we can simply install it via pip. And then the magic happens. Now, I will take this one slowly because a lot is happening in very little amount of code. Well, the decorator, func the decorator you see here, the uh, mock patch dict, what it does, it replaces a dict. 
how it, can it find that dict? Oh, the first argument to give it is a name. Now, notice that this name isn't OS environment, but rather it is the environment in the model that we are uh, testing. How come? Well, the model that we are testing does from OS import environment. So, environment is now in the namespace of that model, and this is the name we need to patch. So, we give it a name. The next thing we give it is a key value pair, and we simply tell uh, uh, to the, the, the system to give us a dictionary with that object, with that, uh, with that environment, and we insert a key and a value inside. And now we can assert that the language that we get back is Hebrew. And how come? This is simply the first uh, uh, variable which we are testing. So this is it, and our test passes. Hooray! Well, let's see if we can continue this trick. Oh, no. This one. Yeah. Let's look at the is quit. What the is quit? Uh, when the uh, player uh, plays, uh, she is prompted to enter a number. Well, she might decide in this point that this is a boring game. She will be right. And she will want to quit. And so we, she, she, she should have a way to inform the, uh, the game that she wants to quit. But since we are enterprise, she can do it in her own language. So how this function looks, it looks like this. Well, uh, we check first what the language is. And if it is Hebrew, we have some set of strings that indicate quit. And if it is not Hebrew, it is probably English. So we uh, uh, checks against strings in English. Of course, this is a work in progress. We haven't have implemented Yiddish yet. Uh, so uh, it is on the roadmap. But how are we going to test it? Well, apparently, we can do exactly what we did before. We can patch the environment. But we can do better. We don't want to check now uh, the language because we already tested it, it passed. We only want to check our unit, our is quit function. So instead, we want to patch the, uh, uh, the, the language function. So, how are we going to do that? This is not a dictionary that we simply replace. Well, let me introduce you to the mock. Well, Mock is like a very happy dog. You can put anything on it, you can do anything to it, and it will be still be happy like this one with the silly hat on, and it's still very happy. Well, you, let's give that Mock a name. Let's call it Lulu. And let's uh, uh, ask it some things. First, let's try to represent it and, he, it, and it said, here's a Mock for you. So we can try to call it, and it will say, here's a mock for you. And we can uh, ask, you can access an attribute on it, and it will say, here's a mock for you. And we can go overboard, and we can ask lulu dot uh, bark function dot run dot blah dot blah. We can bring it, we can give it any arguments we want, and it will say, here's a mock for you. And there's more. We can even make, make, us do tr make it do tricks. We can teach it what to do, what to return us. For example, we have a return value special uh, keyword, and if we say lulu bark retur return value woof, and we will call lulu.bark, it will woof. We can also get overboard with it. We can, we can uh, uh, say lulu.makepuppy.returnValue.sideEffect equals some sort of list. And what, what it does, 
when we call lulu make puppy with any value whatsoever it will return us a mock with a special properties that we defined there so we have now a puppy we can call bark on the puppy when we call it first time bark it will say yip and when we call it a second time it will say yip and when we call it a, a third time we will get to the exception so it will instead returning it it will raise it so it raises a stinky exception and using that we can solve our problem well it it uh, uh, apparently if we call mock patch on some name it will replace that name with a mock and this is what we are actually doing we are calling the mock patch i hope that you see yes you see all the code there nice uh, you um it will return that patched value and it will give that fa that that a uh, uh, that value via the first name of this function so we can manipulate it inside the function uh, then inside the function we say mock lang return value n and from now on when this function runs within this context what that would what, what that would, what will happen is that uh, the uh, the call simply call our function will get the english and then we can assert that when we give it a quit message it will quit and when we give it something else like i want my mommy it won't and we're done nice we're on fire well next let's tackle something that is very scary or at least used to be very scary how are, can we uh, can we deal with uh, access to the cloud well we want to translate our string and for that we are going to access the cloud but the cloud will change every time and i don't know if i ha will have an internet connection i don't know if the translation will be changed i can't see anything good about it it might be expensive but i can mock it so let's look at, at our function well what we are doing here is using the uh, google translate api uh, we simply have a client object and then uh, we uh, just uh, see what our language is and based on that language if it is english we don't need to translate but if it is not english we simply go to the cloud we ask to we call the translate method with the language we know we want to translate into and it we we, we get back some json object and from that json object we want the specific part of it that have our translation and this is what we return well how to test this well we need to patch ma uh, language we know how to do it thank you and uh, we need to patch also uh, the um uh, the the cloud well we know how to patch to patch the language but let's see how to patch the cloud now remember that all we have is we have a client object we call a function on it it returns us some object and we uh, pass this object so this is what we need to know what we need to do first we patch the language and we make it return hebrew because we want to test that it actually translates and then what we do uh, we say the client you have a, a translate method that has a return value that returns a list of a dict and then we can simply assert that we get that value back simple and we're done that was not too easy no, not too hard that was easy okay next i could uh, show show you uh, how we deal with print there's a nice trick but since i don't have time i will wave my hand and say we did it 
and it works. And I will show you another way to uh, to you, to deal with a uh, print. So this will have to wait for another lecture. So let's look at the uh, at the outro. Here's something odd happens. We call seed dot random random dot seed. Well, random dot seed it does something, but I don't know how to test it. It it changes something in the underlying system that changes the number that I will return back. But how can I test such a thing? Well. Let's look at, 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 the, at the function. It, it, it simply called that function. It, I don't know how to test it. Well, luckily, Lulu is a snitch. Mock is a snitch. It will tell us what has happened. And here's, a, here's, here's an example. We can tell Lulu uh, to play ball and then to play the lute and then count how many times it was called with, and it will say two. We can also call some function with some arguments, and we can assert that it was called just once with just those arguments. We can even assert that a function did, wasn't called at all. In that case, we want to assert that the dog didn't bark in the night. So here's our test function. Well. All we have to do here is to patch random, to patch print, and to patch the T translation function. In our case, we use the side effect to assign it to a, a, a function. In, the, in our case, this is the identity function. I want simply to get back what I g give in. And then, after I call the uh, intro, I can simply uh, have my message and I can assert that the T function was called with my message. I can assert that the print function was a called with that message and I can assert that the seed function was called with no arguments. And I'm done. Now I will wave my hand in the air in the order of brevity, and I will say that we de all the other tests are basically the same. It is more of the same, and I won't bore you with it. So let's say we did all of this, and it is passed. Hooray! We have full coverage. Yay! But a word of caution. That the thing that it passed isn't everything. In our case, we have an error. Our translation function has an error. Well, how come all my tests have, have, have passed? Well, it turns out that my mocking function was wrong. It, it matched my test function, but it didn't match the world. Well, there are ways to make the mocking function more strict and to observe the function it marks and see if it is OK. Thank you. Uh, and uh, But this is not foolproof. Uh, you can't check everything. So in conclusion, if your light isn't green, you don't go, period. But if your light is green, it doesn't say, say immediately that you are driving. No, no. You have to use your common sense. You have to use another testing method methodology like uh, integration tests. And that was the first step on the long road, from no coverage at all to fully covered and that you are trusting your coverage, you trust, you trust your tests. And the first step, in my opinion, the first best test is unit tests with mocks and after you do that, you make sure that your mocks reflects reality and you do extra testing that you can trust your code, you can refactor your code, and you can have a very long and happy life. Thank you.
Oh, the, the, the question was, uh, do I have tricks that make the uh, mocking, uh, the mocks less bri brittle? Well, sort of and not really. Uh, there is a, um, a, a function in the mocking module named create outer spec, where you give the, um, uh, uh, it gives you back a mock object that will fail if you call attributes that doesn't exist on the original object. And it catch some things, it doesn't catch everything. Uh, if you if you have written a well uh, a, a, a very uh, a good mocks that reflects reality and you test them like any other code uh, and you test only the things that go outside or that are slow then yes um, uh, you should uh, do that if you can if you don't have to mock all your function calls, if you call a function that is easy to test, simply do that. Uh, as I don't, the, 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 the question was, uh, uh, do I know that if you try to uh, uh, mock a C function, uh, a C extension uh, function, uh, it will fail? Uh, at, uh, it doesn't seem logical to me. I can uh, mock every name. I can mock print without a problem, uh, even in Python 2, uh, and it is not a function. You simply replace the name and you call a very a different object. You don't call it. Or, 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 or did I miss your question? The, the C function, you try to test the C function and to mock something it calls to? It, it looks very weird to me. I haven't uh, uh, encountered this phenome phenomena, uh, so I can't help. Ah, you, you, you want the, the model of, of record replay. Uh, there are frameworks that do just that. Uh, this framework isn't that sort of mocking. Uh, what it does is uh, uh, you do something and you assert that it happens. It's a different model. And I see we are running out of time. We have a coffee break. Uh, so uh, you can all go uh, to drink your coffee. Uh, let me just say one word about my employer, Sentinel-1. Uh, I found this job uh, at the previous PyCon. i having a very good time, except one bad thing I have to talk about, to, to say about Sentinel-1. I, I sit uh, 12 paces from a huge pile of chocolates that I try not to eat every day. Uh, and we are still looking for people who doesn't mind sitting next to a huge pile of chocolates. So please come and, and we're happy to talk to you. Thank you very much.